Now, welcome to Capsum TV once again on this new session. You can find us on YouTube at Capsum TV. Uh, please be so kind to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. This blesses us so that we can continue to bless you and be a spiritual edification for your spirit, your soul, and body directly from the courtroom and throne of heaven. We release the blessing of the Lord upon you that make it one rich and he has no sorrow, no struggle, no trouble with it. We already have blessed the Holy Spirit to think to our minds, speak to our mouths, love and operate to our spirits, our soul, and our bodies directly from the courtroom of heaven. We're talking about the uh, winning the spiritual battlefield of the mind. We just finished up a session. Our last session was the integrity of the word, how the word uh, operates, uh, at confessing the word, believing the word, acting on the word, and what all of that means. Now we're going to talk about the winning word under the auspices of winning the battlefield of the mind with the living word of God. Now, as we go on, the word or the living word takes the place of Christ. As I said previously in another session, this is the written word, which is called the Bible or our kingdom constitution. And so this takes the place of, of the unseen Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ physically is at the right hand of the center of power of the universe, uh, sitting on the throne right next to the Father, where spiritually we're sitting at as well. So you take this, w this written word and you speak it, it becomes a spoken word, you act on it, it becomes the living word, and you can appropriate it or apply what it says. I don't care what the devil throws at you, I don't care whether he assigned against you uh, in any area of your life, you can take the word like the Lord Jesus did and defeat him with the word. What you have to do is act on it, as we talked about. The so now, in this aspect, the word living in us, it becomes a part of, of us by meditation. Meditation means thinking, believing, speaking, acting, expecting, and getting the God's result in our everyday life. The word living in us gets into our blood. So for, in, for example, Acts 19 and 20 says, mightily grew the word of the Lord. It was talking about the written word that, that was spoken and acted upon and the word won in every situation. If you apply, if you take the written word and give voice to it and act on it, it will cause you to win in every area of your life just like it did Jesus. Another passage scripture says that in Ephesus, where Apostle Paul wrote the book of Ephesians, uh, a revival broke out and it was shaking up the nation in, in the city of Ephesus. It was not Paul's preaching. It was not philosophy. It was not religi religiosity. It was kingdomosity. Uh, I know you haven't heard that word before, but we, we talked about previously we had to kingdomize everything and kingdom size everything instead of being religious size and everything. That's why we're having issues and problems now winning with the word of God coming out of our mouth. You don't just confess the word. You got to act on that word. You got faith gives you power to believe or act on the word and bring godly results. Now, uh, so uh, Acts 12 and uh, 24 said it was a living word. It says the word of God grew and multiplied. It, where did it grow, sons and daughters of God? The l word of God grew in the heart and the mind of the people. It gained a control over them. Now, uh, as we said earlier, faith comes when the word of God wins over our thinking. Oh, wow. We're talking about winning the spiritual battlefield of the mind with the, using the living word of God. So when you allow the, the word of God to, to prevail over your, the way that you think, your thinking process, how you reason, your imagination, your thought life, your arguments, or, or setting up stronghold, good strongholds in your thought life, when you do that, you will win. The word of God will cause you to win. Faith comes uh, when we allow that word because faith works by love and faith is the same as the word of God is. Now, in Matthew 8, 23 and 27, it says we see uh, the, the word of prevailing or winning in Jesus' life or through his mouth over the laws of nature. 
in, in Proverbs 18 21, I know it was Jesus that inspired uh, the writer to write that. He says, Life and death is in the authority of your tongue. Life and death is in the authority of your word. You have to literally be careful what you say. And people will get on your nerve. People, the devil will try you. He'll try you every day. How do I know? Been there, done that, not going back. This is better. But he tries you every day, and you got to m continue to make the word of God priority, or the word of the kingdom of God in your life. So now in uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 19, it says, it speaks on this wise. It says that today I'm calling heaven and earth as witnesses that I've given you a choice. We have a choice between speaking words of life uh, over a situation or speaking words of death over a situation. With a, we have to choose the words of life so that we and our families and all our loved ones may be blessed and live. Wow. And so I'll give you one for good measure. Say, give, we need to give ourselves away. Give ourselves away to the Lord. Amen. And to him alone. We need to listen to him only. We need to hold on to him through his word and don't let go. Because the Lord is our life and he's the only one who can bless us or empower us and truly satisfy us from the inside out. He'll give us many prosperous years, amen, in our life if we rely on him and rely on him his word that's dr clark's paraphrase now uh in in um in matthew 14 13 through 21 it was the word that was coming out of jesus mouth that ruled the law of supply and demand that in other words what happened was five loaves and two fishes multiplied until it fed five thousand people Amen. And had 12 baskets of, of leftover. I'm, I'm not talking about a uh, little bitty baskets. I'm talking 12 large baskets with leftover after Jesus took the, he took the five fish and two loaves, five loaves and two fish. And he, he thanked the father for it. And the law of uh, the key of to the law of supply and demand will put in motion. You can do that in your everyday life. Well, what do you mean by that, Dr. Clark? I'm glad you asked that question. If the Bible says if you give, it's going to be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over or with men giving to your bosom, or God will, God will call men or women to give into your bosom. Sound like much of multiplication to me. Sound like uh, invoking the law of demand, of supply and demand to me. Sound like, and John 10 and 10 said this. Jesus said, I have come that you might have and enjoy life in abundance to the full until it what? Overflow. Sound like, sound like invoking or, or using the keys of the kingdom to, to, to open up the provision of the law of the man to me. Uh, so let's go on a little bit further. So John 1, 1 through 3 talks about in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Talking about the living word. And the word was God. The same or the living word was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through the living word. And without the living word was not anything made that was made. God honors our language as human beings by calling uh, Jesus the word or the living word. The whole universe, everything that you see in life, was brought into existence by what? Words. Big question mark right here. How are your words? How are you using words? What kind of words are you calling, uh, releasing out of your mouth? What what angels are you uh, releasing to, to act on the words that you're speaking? Because you have two sets of angels that are listening. You have the holy angels and you have unholy angels. What what angels are you activating? What angels are you motor, uh, uh, um, mobilizing or engaging with the words that come out of your mouth? Wow. God spoke in Genesis uh, 1, 14 through 19. He said, um, yeah, uh, it, and he spoke that through words. He said, let there be light. Let the light be for the affirmative of the heaven to give light upon the earth. The word of God, a spirit creates material things. The spirit realm is more important. In fact, everything on earth should be a parallel to what is in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a real place. We are learning about it every time I get up to minister the word of God or, or do a, a broadcast about the kingdom because we lost the knowledge of the kingdom. And my God said in Hosea 4 and 6, my people, 
My people are perishing. My people are destroyed. My people are in lack. My people are in poverty. My people are in distress. My people are, are under duress because of a lack of knowledge of who they really are in the kingdom of God. Now, let's go on. So, uh, a spirit creates a material thing proving that the spiritual realm is greater than the natural or the material realm. Now, John 1 and 14 said this, And the word of the living word became human and lived among us. You see, we have the spoken word in the mouth of Jesus. Then we have the word made human dwelling uh, in our midst. Wow. Uh, did you get that? We have the spoken word uh, in the mouth of Jesus. Then we have the word made human living amongst us. Then we have the spoken word in the lips of the mouth coming out of the mouth of the of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Amen. Uh, through which revelation come of the word of God coming out of, of your mouth. Now, let's go on a little bit further. The word, uh, living word or the spoken word in, in Greek is called rhema. Uh, right now, instant word. In Hebrew, it's called a davar. D-A-V-A-R. Now, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13, I'm using a lot of scripture because I want to give you validation from that, the, what, I'm, the, what I'm teaching you about winning the spiritual battlefield of the mind with the living word. Jesus ministered for 33, he lived for 33 and a half years, but he ministered for three and a half years, and he taught his disciples who later became his apostles everything that the father told him to teach and he left that our that what we our way of life the way of faith and the way of love is based upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets amen let's go on it said wherefore uh, we also give a continued thanks to god because we heard from him we heard from him the spoken word of god we received it not as the word of a man but it is it the truth the word of god who himself works at effectively in us that believe if you believe the word of God that will work effectively in you and you'll get the same supernatural godly result the Holy Spirit on the inside of you will forever bring you revelation let me give you this knowledge revealed to all of us sons and daughters of God uh, by the Holy Spirit from the either the written word the the spoken word or the living word will always bring you and I supernatural godly results so we can do what? So we can always win. Did I say that? Wow. Let's go on just a little bit further. Now, so, while Paul was in Thessalonica, Thessalonia or Lanica, it was the spoken word. But his letters are the written word, the life-giving word. Well, Psalms 1720 speaks like this. The, the Father, or Yahweh, Abba Father, sends his word and healed them. And the word was revealed in the flesh. In other words, the word became a human being. As the spoken word through the lips of Jesus, as the spoken word through the apostles, and finally... Uh, the written word on paper in the in our language so that we might have a permanent record of the living word and how to use it to win in our everyday lives man did i say that that is such good stuff let's go on a little bit further here now so romans 4 and 17 to 19 give us a real graphic picture of the word of god winning over the fear and hope uh, and knowledge that comes to us through our five natural senses in the mind or the thought life of Abraham. Now, let's, let's turn to that. Romans 4, 17 through 19. Romans 4, 17 through 19. And I'll read that from the clear word, pass, uh, paraphrase version. Romans 4, 17 through 19. And it reads as such. The scriptures confirm that God spoke to Abraham. I have made you the spiritual father of many nationalities of many nations. This promise, amen, was given to Abraham because he had faith that God would raise the dead and create a whole new world in order to keep his promise that he made. In other words, what is he saying? What kind of promise? He gave him his word. And so Abraham did what? Faith. 
he heard the word he acted on the word the word of god gives you faith to act on the word of god well faith is just literally one two-sided coin faith is on one side and the other side is believe or believing is literally acting on the word of god so faith empower you to act on the word of god if you didn't get faith from the word of god you can't act on the word of god even to get uh, as an unbeliever to get saved or even to be filled with the holy spirit your faith has to be activated or released from the word of god that's spoken or taught or preached or teach in order for you to to act on that word to get saved to get filled with the holy spirit or to get anything else in life you confess first and then then you get the manifest then you get the result amen isn't that good let's go on and he said uh um, he told him he says oh when everything looked hopeless to abraham from the natural standpoint because he had no heir he still had faith that god would make him the father of many nations Abraham never forgot how God asked him to look up at the stars in the heaven and see that's how numerous of that's how your descendants will be in other words he said you're going to have a descendant as, as, as the stars in the heaven there's a lot of stars up there and so he, Abraham believed what God said you and I when everything looks hopeless in our life we still got to believe what the word of God said if God said it he would do it number 23 and 19 said I'm not a man that I shall lie nor the son of man that i should change my mind or repent if i said it won't i do it i will bring it to pass and so uh, you and i today we have to be able to do the same thing something down to god abraham never forgot you and i have never should never forget the promises of god that he made to us in the written word of god and and give it uh, give it voice speak it and then act on it he believed what God said. You and I have to believe what God says already. Even though uh, Abraham and Sarah, or Sarai at that time, was much too old to have children. Her name would change to, to, Sarai, to Sarah, from Sarai to Sarah. Ab Abraham, Abraham's name was Abram, and he changed it to Abraham. Amen. We'll talk about that another time, what God did to do that. And so uh, even Abraham, in the face of all of this, uh, he was a... He was a hundred years old, and Sarah had long uh, before gone through the change of, of life. Uh, in the face of all of this, and even though he had tr tried to solve the, the problem not having children himself by fathering Ishmael through Hagar, Abraham's faith in the promise that God had gave, given him as a witness or a testimony to his faith in God, and it kept getting stronger. He never doubted that God had power to do exactly what he said he would do. I'm telling you the same thing today. Never doubt the word of God, because doubt and unbelief will, will cause you to miss out on the promises that God has made in your life and my life. And the Bible says that all of the promises of God that he made to us before the foundation of the world, before you were formed as an embryo by your biological parents, before God allowed your spirit to enter into the womb of your mother, he already had a destiny he already had a purpose he already had a plan for your life we had to get to know what god's plans are and cooperate with him and work together with him as the bible said to make that happen in your life while you're here on earth this time around now notice carefully that uh it says uh abraham who in hope uh, ex believed against hope he believed in supernatural hope but he, be, uh, he then he d uh, he believed against in supernatural hope, he believed against natural hope, to to the for the purpose or to the end that he became the father of mission, um, uh, father of many nations. Excuse me. Hope and faith were in combat. Faith won and made hope a reality. You and I need to have uh, faith and hope, which you naturally hope for, not supernatural hope, because faith says everything is already is. Faith takes the past, the present, and the future, and it wraps it all into the now. What it does, it takes it takes hope and does a combat, natural hope with it, and say it is because God said it is, and it brings it, and it, it overrides what you're looking at in the natural. That's why we look not or focus not on the things which we uh, see in the natural, but on the things that we do not see, amen, for or because the things that we see in the natural realm are temporary, and they are subject to change by the things that we do not see naturally, amen. Wow. Let's go on just a little bit further here. And so, uh, they were in combat, and 
faith won, supernatural faith won and made what you hope a reality. What you expect in the natural realm, faith makes that a reality. Faith makes that a, a veracity or the truth from the living word of God. And for example, look at Hebrews 11 and 1. It says faith is gift substance to what we hope for. Hope is always, what you hope for is always in the future. Another translation says this. A faith perceives or discerns as real what, uh, uh, by the five spiritual senses what is not revealed to the five natural senses. Wow. In other words, faith says it is because everything in the kingdom of God is already done. God created everything. Everything is. Everything already is. But what we do, we have to, we have to appropriate it by speaking the living word of God and dealing with the, uh, the battlefield of the mind. Amen. Against the evil one, against our arch enemy and all all his evil forces. Amen. In order for us to appropriate what is already ours legally. Amen. Did I say that? If so hope is always in the future. It's like a dream. And it is never real because it's just hope. But what faith does, supernatural faith of God that he gives us, reaches up, takes hold of hope, what you hope for in the natural, and brings it into the into the now. Well, fa- I'm going to say that again. Supernatural faith of God reaches up and grabs what we hope for in the natural and brings it into the, the present or brings it into the now. Now, let's go on one more. Romans 4, 19, it says, uh, again, without being weak in faith, he considered it now his own body, now as good as dead, he being without a, about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah when she was past the, the age of child. She has already began the, the change in her life. That man had hope for a child. Now, faith changed the hope in reality. Faith, the faith of God, as it says in uh, Mark 11 and 22, uh, having the faith of God. How do we get the faith of God? We get the faith of God from the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the living word of God. Hearing the living word of God preached and teach. And when you you confess what the word says, Faith is activated in you, and you act on, and you cause you to act on it and believe on it, and it brings you supernatural godly results. Again, to get saved, to get filled with the Holy Spirit, and to appropriate all of the promises in your everyday life. Now, so yet uh, Abraham was looking unto the promise of God. You and I have to look unto the promises of God spoken through an angel, and he doubted not through unbelief, but he grew strong through the faith. It was the faith of God giving glory, giving honor to God, and being fully persuaded or sure that what God had promised he was able to perform, amen, he would be, it would become a reality. And we know now that it became a reality. And so Abraham's faith was accounted to him as righteousness. This righteousness gives a man uh, a standing or right position with God. The standing of a friend with God. They call him the friend of God. Now, let's go on a little bit further. Uh, in Acts uh, 6 and 7, it tells us that the, that the word increased as they preached and practiced what they heard from the master's lips. The word of God began to develop and grow until it became a mighty force in the hearts of men and women, even reaching all the way down to us here today. Wow, did I say that? Now, so it, it, it was the prevailing or it was the winning word. You might want to write that down, the winning word. Uh, I win, say that with me, I win with, with the word of God in my mouth. It's like a two-edged sword for offense and defense. And if you act on it and and confess that word and believe what that word says by the faith of God, amen, and then you will get the same results that Jesus got. You got to kingdom everything. You got to bring everything under the dominion that we have, that has been restored back to us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Wow. So in ministry, the word of God is a, has to be a living, growing force. The word is eternal. The word is never dies. Like God, if the word is ever fresh, is ever, amen, it, it, uh, it's always a living, growing force, amen. Like uh, it's always young, it's always new, it never gets old. For, for example, in Matthew 24 and 35, it said, heaven and earth is going to pass away. He said, but my word will never pass away. 
It's a part of God. It it is what God is. Oh, I know they say it is what the word. It is what it is. No, it is what God is. I like that. It is what the word is. What God is. So when you have to say, uh, uh-uh, uh, it is what God is, and it is what I say it is. After I speak or release the living word of God out of my mouth, isn't that good? That's part of Mark eleven twenty two, and it reads as such. It says, and having the faith of God or the God kind of faith, you should speak unto a mountain of adversity or problem or sickness or disease or poverty or lack or fear or failure or low self-esteem or struggle or trouble you should speak to that and and and, and doubt not in your heart or your mind but believe in your uh, spirit that the things which you say uh, will come to pass you're going to have whatever you say sound like that as i said earlier makes you the prophet over your own life that's why life and death is in the authority of your word you got to grow to that we have to catch that it's better caught than taught now John 14 and 9, the, uh, Philip asked the Lord Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. Master, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. And Jesus responded to him and said this, Have I been thought a long time with you, uh, Philip, and don't you know me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus and the Father were one. Jesus and the Word, the, the written Word or the spoken Word, the Davar, uh, are the one and the same. John 12 and 49, another example. Said, Jesus said, For I speak not from myself, but the Father that sent me, he gave me commandments, what I should say and what or what I should speak. Why? And I know that his commandment is life eternal. Jesus said in John 6 and, and 63, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let me flip over there right quick. And read that John 6 and 63 and it says what am I talking about is man's soul and what it feeds on your soul what is your mind feed up on what your mind meditating on they said not physical nourishment but the words I speak to them to you spiritually are spiritually nourishing and they will give give you life to spiritually mentally physically financially and in all relationships it gives life well as we say we thank you for turning on tuning in turning up to the kingdom frequency where we always have a fresh revelation which is a fresh revelation from the living word from the from the spoken word from the written word amen that's beneficial for you in all areas of your life directly from the courtroom and from the throne room of heaven now so uh, Jesus said that. Now, we can see that Jesus uh, was fearless in the presence of disease and of demons. We have to get to the point also, sons and daughters of God, uh, uh, that we uh, have to, we have nothing to fear. We talked about that Sunday, the, uh, the battlefield of the mind of uh, continuous no fear. Wow. No, what did I say? No fear. We talked about that on Sunday. No fear in winning, continuing what in our battlefield of the mind. Now, we can see that he was fearless, and we talked about that as, m- as such. He was using the Father's word, and he knew that they could, the Father's words would not fail. If you and I would take the living word of God and speak that word, we would not fail as well. Now, uh, so, First Timothy or Second Timothy 4 and 2 says, Preach the word, be urgent, be instant in season and out of season. Rep- uh, convince and expose and, uh, and uh, correct and encourage with all patience and in teaching or instruction to those who oppose themselves. Jesus preached the word and it healed the sick. It broke the power of demons over men and women's lives. The apostles preached the word of God and it uh, it healed the sick. Amen. Uh, and 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 the dead were raised and the masses of multitudes of people were recreated even up to the present day. If you're watching this broadcast and you're born again, it, it reached all the way to this now generation. Now, as we go on, to preach the word means to preach Christ. We're talking about today the winning the spiritual battlefield or kingdom battlefield of the mind by using what? The living word of God. To preach the word means to preach Christ. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. And Hebrew means Mashiach. 
I mean, because Christ is the word. To preach the good news or the gospel means to preach the word or the good news. The word of God is good news, the message of the kingdom. Jesus said, this is the only priority that you and I have. That's all he preached was the good news of the kingdom. If we're not preaching that, then we, we're falling behind on who we are. Now, as we go on, I want to close with this. Uh, he said in John 13, 34, and 35 that the word makes us love. Uh, we'll never be known in the world until the word o uh, wins over us a new commandment I give you that you love one another even as I have loved you amen and that you also love one another by this shall all men know that you are my followers if you have love for one another and the, as I close right now love with the prevailing or the winning power and love now love and now faith would be the winning power in your life even though something is unseen that rule the church it was love that was ruling well praise God for another day another privilege and opportunity we'll take up there on our next session uh, where we left off at this time thank you for turning on tuning in and turning up to the kingdom frequency where we always have a fresh revelation fresh spiritual food for your spirit soul and body directly from the courtroom of heaven please continue to like uh, share and subscribe as we said this blesses us so we can continue to bless you amen we will continue uh this series uh, on our next broadcast and the next lesson or series on the next broadcast you can also find us on facebook at capsum tv now we love you to life and there's nothing you could ever 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 never ever ever think of doing about it see you real soon blessings